Is it working yes, now? Yes. Okay, <laughs> so I start again. So, um, President Kalma, dear Pia, dear Secretary General, dear Roberto, distinguished members of the Parliamentary Assembly, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my real privilege to be here in Yerevan today to address the autumn meeting of the OEC Parliamentary Assembly. The OEC Parliamentary Assembly represents a key link between the citizens of the OECE and the people we are all here to serve and the work of this very important organization. And as the security situation within the OEC continues to face a broad range of challenges, this connection has been more vital than ever. As you're all aware, the OEC finds itself at a critical juncture. Conflict, humanitarian crisis, and increased political discord have affected security and stability across the OEC region, impacting all OEC participating states and posing threats to our societies, our economies, and our futures. And in the face of these security challenges across the OEC region, our organization and its work has never been more essential. We all know that the OEC was founded during the Cold War. It was referred to it earlier. Tensions were high, and the need for confidence-building measures between states was great. The OEC was created to serve as a forum for dialogue across the political, military, economic, environmental, and the very important human aspects of security, giving states a platform where disagreements could be openly discussed and pros project prospects for cooperation could be explored. This role is as, as indispensable today as it was when the Helsinki Final Act was signed. But we are, of course, more than just a forum for dialogue. We are actively engaged in helping participating states address the security challenges they face, from organized crime and corruption to climate change, from human trafficking to intolerance and discrimination. And although we face significant financial constraints with no agreed budget since 2021, we operate within a deeply challenging political climate all because, all because all of that, um, all, uh, all, notwithstanding all of that, the OEC continues to stand and deliver upon its mandates. We play a meaningful role in helping to support inclusive, sustainable solutions that enhance security for all. This work and the value it brings to participating states is visible from the halls of the Hofburg to the streets of Sarajevo. Our field missions, the Secretariat, and the independent institutions all work to support governments and the people of the OEC region through tailor-made projects. And let me also thank all of you because the support of the Parliamentary Assembly across this work is tremendously valuable. For, it, for instance, and here in the South Caucasus, of course, I also want to pay tribute to Armenia for their warm hospitality and for organizing this important event. So here in the South Caucasus, a number, uh, a number, uh, among a number of activities, we are fostering cross-border cooperation among neighboring communities in northern Armenia and southern Georgia to reduce, for example, the risk of wildfires. And through the Geneva International Discussions, dealing with the consequences of the 2008 war in Georgia and the related incident prevention and response mechanism, we're supporting conflict prevention in ways that not only support stability, but provide everyday benefits to the population. I've just met with Prime Minister Pashinyan just before this session, and we discussed the current situation and the challenges the country is facing. I greatly appreciate his dedication to the pursuit of lasting peace, which can be as difficult as it is a necessity. And I very much agree with him also that uh, 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 what he said about the state of play, but also the need for regions to be, uh, to be connected. And this is where connectivity plays a very important role, but connectivity cannot be at the expense of anyone. It has to be inclusive, uh, it has to be open to all in the region, and uh, there needs to be reciprocity. I'm aware of the difficult situation, including the humanitarian situation um, uh, faced by all those who had to flood their homes nearly two months ago. We have been following the situation very closely, 
including uh, with discussions in the PC, in the permanent council, with special uh, permanent councils. I have raised the situation and the importance of respect for numerous OEC commitments, and we stand ready to support in this regard. We are also uh, following closely uh, the uh, discussions about future international engagement, and we believe that this would be very beneficial. And again, we stand ready to contribute towards this if requested and if agreed by all, based on OEC values and based on OEC uh, commitments. The OEC has a lot of specific expertise on many issues, including borders. We have years of experience when it comes to confidence building, reconciliation, and other phases of the conflict cycle. Furthermore, our institutions come immediately to mind when recalling relevant OEC commitments and recommendations, particularly in respect also of minority accommodation. Let me stress that the goal needs to be sustainable, inclusive peace, for the benefit of all the people in the region. And let me also quote the first speaker, the, the president of the, uh, uh, the uh, National Assembly here, when he said that our region needs peace. Uh, it has to be a crossroads for peace. Maybe let me allow me just to mention some further examples where uh, this organization is really serving the people. As the chair of this organization always underlines, it's about people. In Ukraine, we are supporting the government and society to address not only the impact of the war, but are also working to ensure continued progress in support of the country's democratic institutions. Now operating for more than one year, the support program for Ukraine, a wholly extra budgetary funded project, re um, receiving funding from 30 participating states and the European Union, is supporting more than 20 projects to address issues from the impact of landmines and the environmental effects of the war to trafficking uh, in human beings. This work is tremendously valuable, and unfortunately we still face the reality that three of our colleagues who had served as part of the special monitoring mission in Ukraine have been in detention in Donetsk and Luhansk for more than 600 days now. We continue to call for their immediate and their unconditional release. I remain in regular and close contact with relevant stakeholders, including other international organizations, and we continue to make every effort to advocate for and secure our colleagues' freedom. And I hope and I know that I can count on your continued support to achieve this. In Central Asia, we are strengthening trade links between countries to promote their regional integration and participation in international trade, including through support uh, to connectivity projects uh, in, and um, just to mention here our Green Ports project. We are working together with governments, civil society and international partners to address climate change and security challenges in high mountain areas. All of this helps to contribute to the much needed global efforts to address the impact of climate change. And we are supporting border security, including through regional cooperation, which is all the more important as the region continues to cope with the implications of the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan. And in this vein, based on a tasking from ministers in December 21, we developed a program dedicated to supporting the Central Asian participating states with these implications, including in support of women and children who have been particularly affected. In fact, we work to engage those who might be underrepresented in all our work. We work with youth. Just this week, our chair hosted a youth forum in Skopje that focused on innovation and entrepreneurship. And we work to support women, whether in the context of combating gender-based violence or in promoting women as agents for change, whether in water management or arms control. In Southeastern Europe, we continue to work to build bridges and strengthen social cohesion and integration of diverse societies, while also helping to address corruption which is a drain on the population and an impediment to good governance. Or our work on trial monitoring, for, uh, for instance, that has produced concrete findings and recommendations to help participating states in the region address systemic issues in handling serious and complex organized crime and, and corruption. 
I could go on and on, but I know I have to come to an end. But I just felt I wanted to give some very concrete examples of the work we do on a daily, on a daily basis to serve our citizens. And I also have to mention the work we do to combat human trafficking, which is not only a human rights disaster, but it's often linked to organized crime. And here we're working with governments, parliamentarians, we're working with civil society. We have closely cooperated with the Parliamentary Assembly in the past to address um, the, 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 the security-related challenges, but also the human rights um, uh, um, aspects. And also to make sure, for example, that online providers that host websites that knowingly or unknowingly promote human trafficking or tackling supply chains that foster demand for trafficked la uh, for traffic labor. I would underline this because this is such a serious crime and part of the very important work we do and the OEC has really become a leader among the international organizations in that respect. I have given you the positive side of things. Uh, to close, yes, we face challenges. Uh, the President of the Parliamentary Assembly, and I'm grateful to her support, has outlined some of them. I'm confident that we will have a good ministerial in, 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 in Skopje. Just to end um, the, uh, in, uh, with a word on budget, the inflationary reality of the last two years and the fact that we're still operating on the budget agreed in 21 is, of course, a big challenge uh, uh, for all of us. And it was also budgetary constraints that kept me from joining you in, in Vancouver earlier, earlier this year. But we have already cut as much as we possibly could do while still meeting our mandates. And this year, and this will be my last point, in order to cover basic obligations, we had to request a transfer of cash surplus from participating states because consensus could only be reached to fund one aspect of the shortfalls related to the Hofburg costs. We have had to ask each participating state individually to supplement our core budget. And I'm very grateful to those who have supported this request. But as the audit committee outlined earlier this year, there is no, this is no way to run an organization. So still grateful to your support because parliamentarians play a very important role also when it comes to budgetary discussions in the respective capitals. The work of the Parliamentary Assembly is an essential element of all of our work, as I've said in the beginning. And your role as the representatives of your community and delegates represents the vital link between the OSCE and the people it serves. So I continue to count on your support because together we can continue to ensure that the OEC delivers in support of comprehensive and sustainable security. Thank you very much. Mm.